Over the next 16 days or so, I plan on releasing a video a day about the eight Jungian functions in their two Nardian flavors. But in this video, I'll show you how we got from eight functions to four letters to 16 types and via 16 flavor functions to 64 subtypes. If you're new to MBTI or 16 personalities or type, this video will hopefully serve as a map so you don't get lost in the detailed descriptions over the next couple of weeks or so. But first, hello, I'm Doris. I'm a certified coach with a master's in psychology and I help people create happier, healthier relationships. And if you think publishing 17 videos in a row sounds mad, you're right, it is, but I'm taking part in a December YouTube challenge from the Pathless Path community that I'm in. So hopefully I can make it through. I'm an ENFJ, I have ENFJ preferences and I need this kind of external motivation and deadlines to keep me going. So. Let's dive in. There is a saying in coaching that the map is not the territory, but I want to make sure this work is accessible to you. And I'm really excited about these new developments in type, but it's also helpful to situate them in historical context. The theory of psychological types is based on Swiss psychiatrist Carl Gustav Jung's work. And his book Psychologische Typen was first published in 1921. He stipulates that people come into this world with a predisposition to use our brain in a certain way. And Jung defined eight functions and said that as we grow older and practice our behavior, we start preferring and developing one or two functions that become our type of consciousness and help define our sense of self. He started out with noticing that people's mental energy or libido, as he called it, was either drawn to the outer or inner world, which he called extraversion and introversion. These are not functions, they are described as an attitude. Many people already are served with just this one point of insight, where they get their mental energy from and where they like to spend it. Just this one difference already explains so much when it comes to relationships. For example, who wants to have a big wedding or who wants to have a small gathering in the county courthouse. But it's literally just the tip of the iceberg. Jung then noticed that at any given time, our brain seems to be doing one of two things. It's either processing information, aka perceiving, or making decisions, aka judging. Perceiving can happen in two ways, based on the senses, so a more physical approach, or based on intuition, which is a more mental approach. Deciding can also happen in two ways, based on objective logic or based on subjective feelings and values. Both of these are rational functions as objective and subjective decisions are made in the mind. His theory is also one of balancing opposites. So like points on the compass, the opposite of those top two functions that describe your type that are in consciousness get pushed into your subconscious or shadow. They tend to pop up when we're stressed and we can also notice them in others when they do things we would never do. And if we're lucky, we feel an internal drive to integrate them and bring them out of the shadow into our whole self during our midlife years. Jung called this process individuation and it's a topic for another day. We are talking about functions now. And the eight Jungian functions are extroverted sensing, abbreviated as SE, introverted sensing, or SI, extroverted intuition, NE, introverted intuition, NI, extroverted thinking, TE, introverted thinking, TI, and extroverted feeling, FE, an introverted feeling of I. Unless you were around in the 1920s in Switzerland, you probably never would have heard about his theory. Luckily, in the 1940s, an American mother-daughter duo put together a questionnaire to help people like you and me figure out which functions we prefer and in which order. That became the Myers-Briggs type indicator. Isabel Myers passed away in 1980, and since then the MBTI has gone through substantial revisions with the help of psychologists and statisticians. The MBTI result is a four-letter type code that is shorthand for the underlying eight Jungian functions. As such, it sorts between extroversion and introversion, sensing and intuiting, thinking and feeling, judging and perceiving. 
It's often used for team building and leadership development. But honestly, the application of type insights is endless and the MBTI is no longer the only way you can arrive at your four letter type code either. For example, Dr. Linda Behrens developed a more holistic approach that she called your self discovery process. And it's something I like to do with my clients as well. But that's yet another video. So awareness of your type preferences of your top one or two conscious cognitive functions, however you arrive at them, is a phenomenal way to better understand yourself and others, and it can speed up your personal growth. Because once you understand how you're wired, you can consciously create change in your life and your relationships. Now in the videos to come, I plan on sharing not just Jung's description of the functions, but also insights based on the work of other psychologists and typology experts one of which is Dr. Dario Nardi. I was certified in his neuroscience of type approach in 2012, and his research of analyzing EEG brain imaging for hundreds of participants recently showed new patterns that allowed him to differentiate the eight Jungian functions into two distinct flavors. He calls them yin or holistic and yang or analytic. So now you have eight times two, 16 functions analytic extroverted sensing, or SEA, holistic extroverted sensing, SEH, analytic introverted sensing, SIA, holistic introverted sensing, SIH, and so on. These are the ones I will describe in more detail in the videos over the next two or so weeks. So Dario saw analytic and holistic patterns in people's brain wiring. In his books, The Magic Diamond and decoding your personality. He clarified that this kind of brain wiring is somewhat malleable or plastic and that it might change over time depending on your age, sex, profession and hobbies. Since this is a relatively new development at the time I'm filming this video in November 2023, I'm going to share what the characteristics of analytic and holistic are now. Quick caveat, the challenge with all descriptions is that we like to generalize into stereotypes. So I want to point out that these are abstractions. So you will not resonate with 100% of the description 100% of the time. But if you have been wondering why your four letter type result may be doesn't really gel with how you see yourself, this differentiation might help. The analytic style or flavor or energy, if you like, is focused on a goal. It filters out distractions and it looks like clarity and confidence, kind of like a spotlight. That is not to say it's simplistic. It considers the complexities of a situation and includes relevant variables. Its approach is top down, a priori. So it's driving the situation with a point already in mind. It likes to solve problems quickly using familiar tools and it can be unaware of its own biases. It is also often more visual. It pays attention to what is being said, like facts, figures, rules, methods, and labels. And thinking is often literal to the specific context. And they often describe using analogies as language. In business, the analytic style is more comfortable with hierarchy, defined roles and leadership, Likely careers for those with an analytical style include business engineering, finance, law, the military, hard sciences, so like physics, chemistry, and tech. The holistic style or flavor or energy is focused on getting input and going with the flow. It's more open-ended and looks like patience and relaxations, kind of like a lantern. That is not to say it's flaky. It considers all aspects at once, which allows it to connect ideas in fresh and new ways. Its approach is bottom up, open to discovery and synergy wherever the data might lead. It likes to find new tools and solutions and is so aware of their own biases that it might lack the confidence to make a change. It is also often more auditory. It pays attention to how things are said but also ethics, intentions, and emotions. Thinking is often figurative and might focus on identity and values, and they often describe using metaphors for language. In business, the holistic style is more comfortable with an egalitarian and collaborative approach, and likely careers for those with a holistic style include the creative arts, social services, humanistic pursuits, 
soft sciences and multiculturalism. But wait, there's more. Dario took these insights a step further and corroborated them with Dr. Viktor Gulenko's work into social styles and Dr. Helen Fisher's work on hormones and neurotransmitters. So he could expand the 16 MBTI types into 64 subtypes. He called these subtypes biosocial styles and they come in four variations, dominant, creative, normalizing and harmonizing. Here's the math again for context from the beginning. Remember how Jung laid out his theory of complementary opposites and how you're either perceiving or judging in a particular way. In other words, everyone has either sensing, intuiting, thinking or feeling in their consciousness. This gives us four types. Sensing thinking types or ST, sensing feeling types or SF, intuiting thinking types or NT and intuiting feeling types or NF. It's basically the two middle letters of your four letter MBTI result that speak to the meat of the theory. Next up, following the balancing logic, if the perceiving function is extroverted, then the judging function will be introverted and vice versa. That gives us eight possible function combinations. Extroverted sensing with introverted thinking, extroverted sensing with introverted feeling, introverted sensing with extroverted thinking, introverted sensing with extroverted feeling, etc. Again, I'll write all that down below. But we're also honoring a person's attitude, extroversion or introversion, which influences the order in which these preferences show up. For ESTP, so extroverted sensing thinking types, for example, it's extroverted sensing and introverted thinking. That turns into ESTP, extroverted sensing and introverted feeling is ESFP, but if you switch those and you have introverted thinking followed by extroverted sensing, then it's ISTP and introverted feeling followed by extroverted sensing is ISFP, etc. Almost done. Two function combos with two different attitudes make 16 types. And once you add another level of two flavors for each function, that adds up to 64 possible combinations. The example for the ESTP just the one, <laughs> looks like this. Analytic extroverted sensing and analytic introverted thinking would be an ESTP dominant. Analytic extroverted sensing and holistic introverted thinking would be an ESTP creative. Holistic extroverted sensing and analytic introverted thinking would be normalizing ESTP. And holistic extroverted sensing and holistic introverted thinking would be a harmonizing ESTP. So if both perceiving and judging functions are in the analytic flavor, AA, the biosocial style is called dominant. If both perceiving and judging functions are in the holistic flavor, so HH, the biosocial style is called harmonizing. If the perceiving function is analytic and the judging function is holistic, or AH, the biosocial style is called creative. And if the perceiving function is holistic and the judging function is analytic, you guessed it, HA, then the biosocial style is called normalizing. And that is how we got from eight functions to four letters to 16 types and via 16 flavor functions to 64 subtypes. Over the next 16 days, again, I'll share videos about the yin and yang or holistic and analytic flavors of each of the original eight Jungian functions. Uh, why do I like this complicated idea? because we humans are complex and contain multitudes and Dario gave us more nuances to play with. So let's explore them. Feel free to leave any questions or comments below and I'll see you in the next video.